Maybe when we're ready for music, every instrument around is broken. Maybe when we're ready for freedom, the heart can no longer beat. Maybe if you show me how desire begs, play a tune in E minor, the slow river of wings will reveal itself. But it had to come to this instead, a broken violin, the heart unresolved, an argument with Jesus or Muhammad Exile has its ways. Now your breath is a flat tune limping its way around the wake of your mouth. Lorca's obviously influenced and inspired a lot of poets. And I, as you're reading tonight, I, I couldn't help but listen to, to you and your poems in conversation with a lot of the other poets that mm -hmm. have written poetry in conversation with Lorca. I think of Darwish, I think of Jack Spicer, uh, even Leonard Cohen, like you said tonight. Who, who are some of those guys that you feel connected to, that you felt like you were in conversation with while you were writing the book? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, Lorca, and through him, <laughs> most importantly, Darwish, definitely. Because we were having that same conversation of what it is to coexist, uh, what Lorca, you know, I mean, he was uh, in the margins, he felt in the margins as well for something completely different, of course, his own sexuality. But it's the same notion of, you know, otherness that we experience. I myself have existed in these, these spaces of otherness, whether it was uh, in relationship to religion or in relationship to nation, to culture, to language. I don't even have a mother tongue. I, you know, I don't consider I have a mother tongue. I, I grew up with all these different languages and they sort of came together. And I don't think I realized it too much later on how these different parts of yourself can really exist harmoniously together, even when these parts are so incredibly different in culture and tradition and history. So I wanted to focus a lot, as I said, on uh, taking these walls down and really thinking about the wall. You know, there's a wall yeah. over there uh, in, you know, Palestine, Israel, and especially from my city. And I say my city because, you know, Jerusalem and Bethlehem is really interesting to look at what that means um, as we continue. Lorca was obsessed with death. Death is maybe another means of life. Death sort of sits with you. It's there when you sleep, when you dream, when you make love. Uh, it's all around. And, uh, and Andalusian culture is very much, very much uh, in conversation with death. So this poem is called While Waiting for Death. When I die, the map of the world will hang over my bed. The small library in Mijas, where I read Lorca for the first time, will become a cafe. The olive trees I can't live without will be in full blossom. I will see death from a distance waiting for me, but I will not move. I will die on a train where the view will be of white trees suspended on gray clouds. I will die in the sky where birds will carry a stream of light on their wings. I will die in a car where the windows will be a quilt of snow. I will die moving. As I wait, my lover will say, you're beautiful. He will mean, I miss the sea. I will say, I don't know the word for life, but know we must play so that it's not only about death. He will ask, why do we grow stillness? Is it a noise we are close to, where the stones and flies and trees and birds and echo and earth and what hides behind them insist on music? A song will streep by us. I will look at him, he too will be waiting, but I'm not certain for what exactly. Then I will think, solitude knows it's where the empty space is, and death knows it shouldn't count while it waits. <laughs>